right, we're going to do method two. So in class today, we did method one. And method one, and we're talking about redox balancing here, just so we, I guess, have a heading, because you guys should have that. Um, so in method one, that was the half reaction method. That's the one where you follow the rules that are given in your book, and you guys have to be familiar with them. You're going to have to memorize those rules. It's just, you know, once you get them memorized, you can balance really fast. This method is going to be method two that I'm going to show you. And this is the oxidation states method. And of course, you guys are going to ask, well, well, do I need to learn both methods? My answer is yes. And you're like, what if I like one better than the other? Don't care. <laughs> you need to know them both. I am going to ask you to be able to do them both when you eventually get to the quiz test, whatever we want to call it. So if I say I want you to balance with the half reaction method, you need to be able to do that and show me the work that goes with it. If I ask you to do it in the oxidation states method, you need to be able to do that and show the work. If I don't tell you, pick the one you like. Maybe you like one better than the other. I don't know. Okay, so oxidation states method, I am going to show you by way of example. I'm going to do three examples with you. It doesn't have a set of rules like the other one does, but you do need to assign oxidation states, which are also in your textbook, and we went over those in class. So here's the first example, and I'm just going to stick with something really easy, something you would be able to balance on your own if I asked you to, but we're going to balance it and make sure the electrons are, in fact, balanced. So the first thing we're going to do is you have to assign oxidation numbers to everything. So hydrogen by itself is zero, oxygen by itself is zero, oxygen in a compound is minus two, hydrogen in a compound is plus one. This actually looks very similar to what we did in the beginning of class yesterday. Not yesterday, today. Um, so notice, hydrogen goes from, <coughs> oh, sorry, start coughing here, um, zero to plus one. So you might ask yourself, did that lose or gain electrons? Hopefully your answer is it lost electrons. But now we're going to be very specific. It went from 0 to plus 1. So we're going to say how many. To go from 0 to plus 1, it would lose 1 electron to do that. Now we're going to look at oxygen. Oxygen goes from 0 to minus 2. So in order to go from 0 to minus 2, it actually has to gain electrons, of course, but specifically it has to gain 2 electrons. Now the same is true, the number of electrons lost and gained have to be equal. So in this method, once you figure out if it's losing or gaining and how many, you will always multiply them by some number, sort of like the way we did with the half reaction method, in order to get them to be equal. In this case, the least common multiple is 2, so we're going to multiply this bottom one by 2 and the top one by 1. This number, what this does is it tells the number of that atom needed on each side, as does this one. As we look at this, I am going to add coefficients to make sure that that happens. I need two hydrogens on each side. Well, I have two there, so I'm good. So I can just put a one there. And I have two over here already, so I'm good. I can just put a one there. Now, here, this tells me I need one oxygen on each side. Well, if I look here at, at this oxygen, I only have one, so I'm good here. But I have two here. So I am going to put, I need to get only one, so I'm going to put one half. Because one half times two gives me one. And then, if I need to multiply to get rid of the fractions, I do. So I'm going to double everything. So 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. But I have proven here that my electrons lost and gained are equal. 
that's what you're doing in this method, is you're proving that the electrons lost and gained are equal. That's the first example. Second example. NH3, ammonia, reacts with oxygen to produce NO and water. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to assign oxidation numbers to each one. So, hydrogen is plus 1, because it almost always is. That means nitrogen here is minus 3. Here, oxygen is 0. Now, I'm going quickly, so if you don't understand where these oxidation numbers come from, you should go back to those rules in your textbook when we, that chart, whose page is escaping me right now, but you probably have it written in your notes. Um, over here in NO, oxygen is minus 2, because it's in a compound. That means nitrogen has to be plus 2. Oxygen is minus 2, and each hydrogen is plus 1. So now we're going to take a look again at what's happening. First thing I notice is I've got nitrogen at minus 3 going to nitrogen at plus 2. So that charge is going up. That's the oxidation. So it's losing electrons. We need to know how many to go from minus 3 to plus 2. And it has to lose 5 electrons. Make sure you can see why that is. Going from minus 3 to plus 2. Now I notice that oxygen is at 0, and it turns into plus 2. Well, except that that, or I'm sorry, not plus 2, I misspoke. Minus 2, but you'll notice that that minus 2 occurs in two different places, so that's kind of fancy. But to go from 0 to minus 2, just staying simple, we have to gain 2 electrons. That's all I need to know. To go from 0 to minus 2, I gain 2. All right, once again, I need to figure out what that least common multiple is. Obviously, you know what it is. It's 10, so we need 5 there and 2 here. And once again, this number tells me how many nitrogens I need on each side. I need 2. So, well, I only have 1 here, so I'm going to put a 2 in front. That gives me 2 nitrogens on the left. And over here, I need 2 nitrogens. Oops, so i got to put a 2 in front. Now I've got 2 nitrogens as well. Great. Now, I need five oxygens total on each side of the arrow. So well, let's start on this side. Look, I already know right here I've got two oxygens of the five I need. Well, that gives me some indication then of how many more I need. So I must need a three. That gives me five total oxygens. Now I need five total oxygens here. Well, if you think back to what we did up here, we can do the same thing. There, it's O2, so in order to get 5, I guess I'm going to need 2 and a half or 5 halves. That will give me 5 oxygens. I can't leave it like that, so I'll double everything for NH3 plus 5O2 yields 4NO and 6 waters. And once again, if I did everything correctly, Everything should be balanced for nitrogens, 12 hydrogens, 10 oxygens, and so on and so forth, and we're good. All right, last example. NO2 plus H2O yields HNO3 plus NO. I want you to pause this video. And I want you to assign oxidation numbers to everything. No, I mean really, pause it and assign oxidation numbers and then play it again. All right, so moving on. I know some of you still didn't pause it. Some of you did, good job. We're going to assign those oxidation numbers, see if yours are correct. So here oxygen is minus 2, that means nitrogen is plus 4, so it equals 0. Minus 2 plus 1 in HNO3, that's minus 2, hydrogen is plus 1, and then I will assign nitrogen based on that. So this is minus 6, this is plus 1, so nitrogen has to be plus 5. And then in NO, oxygen is minus 2, nitrogen is plus 2. Hopefully you got those right. So I'm going to look at what changed. So it looks like my nitrogen went from plus 4 to plus 5. That went up, that's an oxidation, and to do that it had to lose one electron. 
oxygens did not change. They're minus 2 all the way across. The hydrogens did not change. They're plus 1 all the way across. But look at this. This nitrogen goes from plus 4 to plus 2. That's a reduction. And you had to gain two electrons for that to happen. So that's pretty cool. That nitrogen is oxidized and reduced. All right. So same thing. i got to figure out my least common multiple. It's obviously two. So I need two nitrogens to lose an electron, and I need one nitrogen to gain an electron. So here's the, the kicker here. We need a total of 2 plus 1, 3 nitrogens on the left side. So I'm going to put a 3 here. But over here, if I follow this arrow along, I need 2 nitrogens over here. So I'm going to put a 2 in front of that. And then if I follow this arrow along, I need 1 to gain an electron. So that can have a 1 there. Now, I want you to notice something. I didn't have any arrows attached to this water. So I don't actually know if it's balanced. If you ever run into a case where you have something that has no arrows attached, you need to hand balance it. You need to literally decide, do I need any of these guys? And balance accordingly. So I've got two hydrogens here. And so I need two hydrogens over here. Oh, so I'm only going to need a one here. Let's make sure the oxygens are balanced while I'm at it. I have one plus six, so seven. And on this side, I've got six plus one is seven. So a one here is appropriate, but you have to hand balance it to know for sure. All right, that finishes this up. You're going to try this on the worksheet tomorrow when you look at the section that says oxidation number practice. You'll do it this method. You'll have a chance to practice it. Bye, guys.